there's a lot of other principles that are very important parts of receiving divine love as well as natural love. And so, you know, everything could be combined very easily. But the two spirits uh, who we, re you know, I really need to get to talk to in the spirit world are still resistive to that discussion. So I'm hopeful that in time that will change. And when that does change, you'll notice the change on earth in the movement because it is a heavy influence from them. What's the first level that you said you got through? I got through to some, there was a group of 2,000 fifth sphere spirits who, mm -hmm. uh, who um, were willing to talk to me about the, the uh, oneness movement on earth and what they were doing. They are aware, um, people who've had the golden bowl, sens bowl sensation enter them, they, they know that it's the spirit, not, not the person, but the spirits obviously know that it's one of them that's doing it. And there's literally uh, hundreds of thousands of spirits now in the spirit world who are, who are there at call at every meeting mm -hmm. of, of the oneness movement, mm -hmm. uh, waiting to go in, uh, be allowed by the person's desire to go into the person. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So the, the balls of light that shot in the photos, yep. are they actually spirits? They're spirits, yeah. They're everywhere though, yep. not just around India. I've seen so many examples. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not saying. Just of one, they're here. Oh, yeah. I've got a girlfriend who took some mm -hmm. photos recently. Well, exactly. The last four months in Bar and there. It's yeah. graphic yeah. to see them. Yeah. Like yeah. Even in Peter's Alpha Dynamic courses, they're there at the of end. Of course. We have all this they're there at stuff, every yeah. single meeting of every single type of thing that you can think of. Mm -hmm. Every single religious meeting, every single. Like every that these spirits are there waiting. They're really showing up a lot lately, though, aren't they? Because it seems a relatively new phenomenon that they're appearing in photographs. Yeah, because all of them are aware of the huge changes that are starting to happen on the earth now, and they're all many of them are wanting to assist, of course, mm -hmm. and they're all aware too of you know the return of fourteen from the, from the twenty um, second sphere as well. All the ones in the celestial realms are aware of that, mm -hmm. and many of the ones in the other realms are aware of that. Even ones in the hells are aware of that, mm -hmm. and I've had some bad experiences with them because of it as well but um, so there's a there's a whole range of spirits who are totally aware now and so there's a lot of spirit activity at the moment on earth as a result of that. AJ they're having seminars in America around these orbs they're calling them orb seminars and and they're taking all kinds of pictures and is that also because of the digital capacity it's a fast camera so they can they can pick them up more that they've always been there yeah, the orbs have always been there, but there isn't a high, there is a much more intense uh, feeling in the spirit world of interest of what's going on on the okay. earth at the moment, for a lot of different reasons. Okay. Um, and many, you know, they're all aware of major changes occurring around 2012, for example. They're all aware of the return of, of Jesus and, and, and others, uh, the return of 14. They've been aware for nearly 14 years about that. So, so there's a lot of awareness now in the spirit world that um, you know that is causing a higher degree of interest and there is also a higher degree of interest of people on earth as well as a result and so uh, that's generating a lot more interest in the spirit world as well so it's this, it's a rapidly growing phenomenon it's all over the internet there's pictures everywhere yeah yeah but yeah. could these be lower level entities? any spirit that's above the first sphere uh, will present themselves as a light to you and even groups of spirits in the first sphere can. When I say groups, it like you can have like 50,000 spirits in the first sphere. They can create a body and, and actually inhabit that body for a short period of time and cause damage. So um, it just depends on whether they're cooperating with each other. And most people in the first sphere don't feel like cooperating with anybody else. <laughs> so yeah, there's all sorts of spirit influences going so on. The friend took a picture of me and there were these spheres all over me. Mm -hmm. and would like to think that's a good thing, but it could, from what you're saying, they could just be entities. And they, when you say entities, they are all people. They, every single orb is a person. Right? Mm. Is a person who lived on Earth, and uh, and they're in different spiritual conditions. The key is where you've been led to. So if you're all being led down to the pub every uh, every night to get yourself drunk, I'm following an orb. you're following a spirit, <laughs> <laughs> but the spirit doesn't have a good intention. Right? If you're getting led to spiritual discussion about truth and love and, and growth, then obviously the spirits with you have good intentions and are leading you down that path. Right? 
So, you know, just allow yourself to trust what's going on in your life rather than becoming fearful of it. Because yeah. it's all the law of attraction. It's all the law of attraction at work. Could you clarify when when we give the blessing, does a spirit actually enter the person we're giving the blessing to or does just their love pour through you? It depends on the person themselves and how mediumistic they are and what their desire is. If their desire is open for the spirit to enter them, then the spirit will enter them. And how long would that spirit stay there? As long as the spirit can maintain the energy without harming the person. Oh. So, you know, it might last an hour, might last a day. Um, you know, I've seen some cases where uh, certain people that are used to spirit possession have lasted two, three, four weeks or whatever. And when the spirit's in that person, they feel a heightened state? Yes. And not always a good heightened state. It depends what spirit sent them. Okay. So many people who have experienced, say, manic depression, for example, often have some very low-level spirit centre them at that state and, uh, and they maintain their manic phase for three, four weeks or whatever until they lose that energetic connection and then the pe person just collapses in exhaustion mm. and that's a spirit possession of, of lower level spirits. Um, the higher the spirit, the more danger there is of damaging your physical form. So, because the energy they're actually transmitting is much more powerful than the energy you're capable of receiving if you're not in the same vibration of love. So, um, they have to be very careful as to how long they do it without harming you. This is why many mediums get exhausted. If you've been to mediums and they say, oh, I'm too tired now, I can't do it anymore. The reason why is because their, their level of development emotionally is not great enough to handle the constant communication with the spirits they're communicating with. Mm. Can actually the, the one that's blessing the energy, and can it do any damage to the brain or the nervous system? All, all of the spirits involved in the oneness blessing are all interested in love. So none of them would be interested in damaging the physical body. Right? It's only the ones that masquerade that are interested in damaging the physical body. So this is where I'm talking about ones who maybe you know, are taking sexual energy, for example. Then they will certainly damage the body in that process. So the key is for you to be sensitive and obviously as givers, you all have the intention of doing it out of love so that it doesn't affect you so much. But if you're receiving it from somebody that you don't know, um, if you feel an uncomfortable feeling, right, so rather than feelings of love or care for you, if you're feeling, you know, feeling sexually violated, for example, which is a common one, um, then you know, just discontinue it straight away and, and tell the person that they're actually violating you sexually. And that you're not impressed, <laughs> and uh, and then work out, you know, let yourself work emotionally through the reason why you attracted that, because you attracted it because of the emotion inside of yourself. So um, yeah, so it just depends. You be sensitive to the energy of people. If people are in a state of love and truth, that's a good sign generally um, that they are in a better condition than if they're in a state of wanting to harm you in any way. And so yeah. Sorry, Ajay, what does change in awareness we have now, mm -hmm. would automatically divine spirits come through us? As, yes, as soon as, as soon as you long for divine love, you are automatically usually assigned a divine love guide, a guide that's on a divine love path, if you haven't got one already. The majority of you have one already. The reason why is because you, a lot of you wouldn't even be here if you didn't have one. Right? And there are some who were invited that aren't here, and many of them have got natural love spirits still very much connected with them. Right? Now, the, the issue then becomes, well, what's, what is a divine love spirit going to do? Well, what they're going to do, they still want to give love, and they still want to give healing to people. But they want to do it based on the person's true heartfelt desire, not based on what they say they want. Whereas a, whereas a natural love spirit will do it based on what they say they think they want. Whereas a divine love spirit always feels the soul before they act. You follow me? So a divine love spirit can certainly help you use your, use your energy, connect with you, and help you help, help heal and help other people. But they won't do it without addressing the soul issues. So if you can bear that in mind, that's what will happen. And there's no harm in you connecting with a natural love spirit and them doing it if that's what the person desires. And the question you've got to ask yourself, is that what you desire? Mm -hmm. So that's up to you, what you desire. Mm. Do you have to have um, the experience of divine 
It's not so much the having of the experience of divine love that you get assigned the guide. The guide is assigned based on your desire for complete truth and desire for divine truth. So many of you would have a guide, even if you haven't received divine love, that is on the divine love path because you've had a desire for God's truth in your heart. And the assignment is done according to the law of attraction. Uh, God actually does the assignment. God actually assigns uh, personally these guides. Mm -hmm. um, and the way he does that is by, by actually motivating the heart of the particular person to connect with you. Uh, so the spirit in the spirit world, in the celestial spheres, uh, is motivated to find you and connect with you because that spirit, God feels that spirit is the best person to help you. And the, re the reason why you feel that that spirit is the best person to help you is because your personalities and your and your experiences on earth are very, very similar. Sometimes you'll be assigned a lot more than one guide because you might have four or five different experiences that are very unique to you and there might be four or five different spirits in the spirit world who need to connect with you to help you emotionally through those experiences. So this is another example of how much God cares, cares for, for us. Yeah. yeah, 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 his constant care for you. Can the guides be at like two places at once kind of thing? Um, our, your guide certainly can, and particularly the higher the guide, the more possibility that is going to be. So if you've got a celestial spirit guide, for example, a celestial spirit is capable of transmitting uh, energy and emotions, and in particular emotions and thoughts, to you and remaining where they are at the, at the same time. Mm -hmm. So they are totally ca capable of that connection. And the higher the connection, and there are ones in the one state, so where they are combined soul, those ones that are a combined soul are capable of doing that to thousands of people at the same time. So, yeah. Like having a big brother. Yeah, and that's how most, that's how millions of people receive the energy from me at the same time. When you give in the blessing, how many spirits are sending their love and what levels, and, or is it only just one that comes in? It depends on uh, how many spirits um, are connected at the time. What, what actually happens is, is for many of them is like a, a group of say six, a six sphere spirit is capable of the transmission of far more natural love than a four sphere spirit. There are literally tens of thousands of four sphere spirits involved in the oneness movement. So when a four sphere spirit transmits that love um, through, through you, they, you know, obviously there might be four or five or ten of them together doing it to give that same intensity if that's what they're trying to cooperate with. So it just depends on the situation and the circumstance. It will be different every single time. Yeah. Mm. And it depends on the longing of the individual too. Yeah. Some people will have a longing for divine love in their heart that you put, that you put your hands on and, and want to give the oneness blessing to. And those ones, uh, natural love spirits probably won't even connect to. And that they'll know. And, and divine love spirits will connect to them and help them open up to receive some of that love. Yeah. Yeah. So it just depends totally on... Mm. on what you know the actual desire of the individual you're giving the blessing to really is. And you don't know that desire necessarily, <coughs> but the spirits can see that desire much more easily. But that's the soul's desire not so if you had an intellectual discussion with them but still not getting there. No. You having an inter you, you will find in time that having an intellectual discussion with anybody is almost fruitless. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um there, there are some good things that can be accomplished if it, if it opens their heart, mm -hmm. it can, it, you can accomplish good things. But if a person doesn't want to open their heart, it's very hard to get anywhere with them emotionally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you know that already from your own experience in your own life, right? How many of you have been in a relationship where the guy just doesn't want to open up or the girl just doesn't want to open up to you emotionally and it's just like... Whatever you do, if this doesn't work, it's like, it's like, and that's what it's like with us as individuals too. So we need to just bear in mind that it's the desire of the individual that drives it. So be sensitive to people who are emotional because they, they have a stronger desire also. They will have a strong desire to receive love from spirits or from God right? and from you. And so if the blessing giver um, is coming from a natural love point of view, and the recipient is divine love. Mm -hmm. Will a, a divine love being come through the, the giver, even if they're just in the? It's unlikely because the natural love 
the, the person on the natural love path is the blessing giver, is not capable of transmitting the emotional intensity that a divine love spirit would be able to transmit. And in fact that the person themselves would be able to receive. It would be better reversing the role of the blessing giver sitting down and the person who's received divine love actually give them the blessing. Mm. Is it possible to give a oneness blessing? Oh, I'm asking this question because I feel a little hesitant about giving the blessing anymore. Mm -hmm. I want to understand more about why I feel that way. I feel some concerns about spirits coming through me. Right. Can you? So help you're afraid me? of spirits coming through? Uh, I'm, I'm concerned about whether I'm doing the best thing for the person I'm giving the blessing to. Right. Well, that's a ma that is a concern. The key, the key thing is respecting the free will of the individual. Now, now if, if a spirit is going to overcloak the individual, so in other words, possess the individual, then, and, the, and that happens without the, free, the person knowing that it's actually going on, but they're thinking that that... And the issue is not so much that the, that, that happens, but that, that they think that's God. Yes. That's the issue. So how do we right. prevent that or...? Well, you don't need to prevent it. All you right. need to say, well, you know, what just entered you was a spirit who's on the natural love path, <laughs> who wants to give you their love and wants to show you what their love feels like. So it's, it sounds like to me like we, before we give the blessing to people, we need to explain and give them a hand out about what the blessing actually is and what can happen so that they're informed. My, my suggestion is do the blessing, just do it, just do it. while people, and then notice the response of the person and, have, and trust the feeling you have inside of yourself. If you feel that they're blocking that love from flowing, then say that to the person. If you feel that, that a spirit just entered them, that was a natural love spirit, just sit down with them and say, oh, you're feeling really good now, aren't you? And the reason why is this. This is what happened. Okay. Just trust your intuition that you, know, you can explain these things to the people who meet. Right? Just, just explain it to them then. Don't, don't do it all at the start, because at the start what will often happen is it will just scare them silly. Yeah, right. right? And, in the end, <laughs> and in the end, what's that do? It just creates yeah. more fear on the earth, and what's more fear on the earth going to do? Mm. Create more damage and more damage to them. And mm. So that's pointless. They're there to receive something, so they're open. They've mm. come at it in an open condition. Keep them in the open condition, but then explain to them what's going on if you feel something has gone on. Even if something untoward's gone on, just, you know, if some blessing giver has come along and you've noticed the lady or man respond like, ooh, then you can say, oh, what's happened there? You know, he's taken something from her. What's going on there? And go up there and say something about it. Yeah. So just say the truth. Um, I was taught to give an intent or speak the intention um, before the blessing process begins. So having heard this today, what I was um, thinking was to set the intent that they receive the divine love. And I mean, the, the rest is up to them, but I felt that if I would give a blessing and set that intention, and perhaps that would help. I can't set the intent for you to receive divine love. Yeah. One thing I can do, though, is set the intent or or pray to God, long to God, that you'll be you be you you get to a state of openness with yeah. that, and that I can help you with that. Yeah. So isn't that something that you do? Certainly. To help. Certainly. Yeah. Do that all the time. That would be my suggestion. Yeah. And understand, understand too that some of the experiences, particularly if they're metaphysical experiences, and do you understand what I mean by that? They're experiences like out of body experiences, or you know, where people feel transformed overnight, or all of those kind of metaphysical experiences. All of those experiences are the result of natural love. Understand that. The experiences that are a result of divine love are always going to be emotional, soul to soul. Understand that. And you'll know when there's a difference when you give the blessing to somebody. You'll see the difference, you'll see the reactions in people. Take notice of those. That, are, that can feel that love and talk to them about the divine love and how they can do that for themselves and you know, take notice of that with them. Yeah. Well, hopefully that's been beneficial for everyone. It's been fantastic. And, uh, and I know some of you came with a fair bit of reticence. I could feel that this morning. And, uh, and so I hope that it's been a, a bit different than what you expected. And, uh, and, and thank you for all taking responsibility for many of your emotions, like you've been doing. So it's, it's really good. Is there anything after one, two, three, four? 
No, not really. Well, well, yes, obviously there's a lot more. You know, the, this was if I'm not feeling the feeling, then owning the fact that I don't want to and asking myself why. Once I start asking myself why, I'll start connecting with things emotionally and that's a whole different <laughs> list of, you know, feeling. But in the end, you will not, once you release blocks, you will not need to know how to experience the emotion because you become just like a child who just feels it as it comes. So you won't need to be told it, how to do it. The, the desire in our mind to be told how to do it all the time is in fact an intellectual blockage that we have to experience our emotions. Right? Yeah, our desire to analyse. Just feel, yeah, yeah. Now, initially that's difficult because we're so used to analysing everything. So it's very, very difficult. But if you can allow yourself to, to not do that, it would be yeah, really good to not analyse. To not, to not analyse and just rather to feel. You know? So the key, the, key is, the key is use your mind as a tool to connect you to your feelings rather than using your mind as a tool to avoid your emotions. Always the answer. Go. Thank you very much. No worries, my pleasure. Thank you for all of your attention. Thank you.